today we'll continue the journey with more configurations of the company side setup and then we'll create cost centers also cost center hierarchies also we'll create the ledgers and other things and most probably if, uh, time permits then we'll create one or two accounting journals also okay so i just typed my company name in the search bar putting and here we are with the company details mm -hmm. now if i click on this three dots i go to company yesterday we went with this option edit company contact information okay there are other important features uh, other things we'll learn as and when the right time will come but the other important configurations and features are this one edit company tax details okay okay here you can define the tax ids let's just like in india we have a tin number tax identification number for the companies or vat number okay. or gst number similarly you can add all this here also if you type india here for example although this is a us based company but for example perspective we can use a tax id here you can see gst in bihar gst in assam central in competition number so we'll add a company identification number here mm now let's go and then you can add anything assam number here okay now one of this would be a primary id right if one is a tax id then one would be a primary id also Like what is the like registration number basically? The primary ID most probably all of the time would a primary ID. So let's okay. mark this one as a primary ID. Now there is another tab, third-party tax options, and people do ask what it is used for. So this is used for third-party tax applications, which you sync with Workday using integrations. Okay, like Avalara. Avalara is one of the tax tool. Has been used to capture tax details from Workday to Avalara. Mm -hmm. Now you define the tax on the sales item, and that gets captured in the Avalara. So there's an integration which works and just set up this tax configuration other things. So you can do the same thing. If you want like operational transaction source, okay, customer invoice. So for customer invoice, what is the tax service name? Like Avalara, or if it is supplier invoice. Okay, you can say ten like this. Enabled. So, I will add the text tool, which captures okay. text based on the sales item that you sell okay. to customers. Okay. So it captures the text basically for the US too, and only used in US side only. Not in India or Asia Pacific side. I am giving an example. It can be anything. It can okay. be anything, any tax third party tool which okay. you want to sync with Workday for this operational transaction sources. It's mostly done by the integration team. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay. Now hit OK here. What happened here? Now let's hit done here. Okay. 
sekali. The other important part is added company ownership details. Mm -hmm. Like who owns this company? If it is a single company, obviously no one owns it. But let me give an example here, like in case of startups, when they set up the company, they need funding, seed funding, funding series A, B, C, D, whatever it is, right? At that time, are the foreign companies or Indian companies itself fund that startup, right? Okay. They buy the equity of that company, like 50, if you've seen the Shark Tank series, Indian Shark Tank series and so on. So they buy the equity, they buy the business of this company that, okay, I own the 50% business in seed of that, I'll give you like one lakh rupees or 10 lakh rupees or one crore or two crores. But I will need a 50% equity. Or I will need a 10% equity like that. So you can mention the company here because on TV, you see an individual only, but in the behind, there is a company who buys this stuff or equity from your business. So mm -hmm. here, I will give a dummy company here, GMS USA. Marking it saying that this GMS USA owns 100% of this company. Okay. And also it gets 100% income, whatever is generated or earned by Twitter Inc. There can be 10 companies also, five companies also, 50 companies also, doesn't matter. Because a company can be purchased or owned by multiple companies. So if you know in China, like they are, most of our like startup, you know, Zomato, Paytm, okay, Nike and all these companies are owned by uh, capital, Alibaba Capitals. If you have heard about Alibaba, Jack Ma, the yes. Chinese tycoon, right? So mm -hmm. they, they own mostly all the Indian startups. This, they have invested in seed funding and all the startups. So more, majority of the startups are owned by the Chinese companies here in India. Okay. Okay, here. Yeah. You don't need to, uh, it's not necessary to put these details, only if it is owned by any other company. The other important feature is, and very important feature is accounting details. Assigning the right accounting to this company. So we'll go to company. Cancel here. Go back to company. Three dots. Added company accounting details. Okay. Added company accounting details. Now you see, I'm still able to change the company currency here. Still have that option. But mm -hmm. once I assign the accounting, it will be grayed out. So watch it very carefully. Okay. Right now, I can use any other currency I want. It will work. See. But once I assign an accounting, it won't work anymore. Or if I do a transaction. Now, mm -hmm. the next important field, there are multiple fields here, but we'll talk about majority of them, which are very important. And the rest, you will come to know about later on, once you start doing practice. So now, only we'll do with, start with like, uh, not with the heavy gyan, very basic gyan, middle level of knowledge. And once you gain some more knowledge about workday, then we'll talk about each and every field. Right now, only important fields, which are important when you set up the company. Fiscal schedule. Okay. Now, fiscal schedule is nothing. It's basically a financial year. Mm -hmm. It is April to March or Jan to December, doesn't matter. In workday, we call it fiscal schedule. Schedule of your fiscal or financial year. If I break it up in a sentence. Break up of your financial year or when your financial year starts. If you click here, when you will do a fresh implementation, okay, there you won't find a single value. This is a practice tenant. So people have built their own fiscal schedule, but you have to build a fiscal schedule from scratch. You cannot have all these values there. It's a practice tenant. That's why you see multiple values here, but don't get confused when you work on a fresh implementation or a new project that, hey, I saw many values in fiscal schedule. Now I see none because it's a practice tenant and people already build this but in a new tenant, a P1 tenant, a phase one tenant, you won't see all these things. 
you have to configure those physical schedules. So right now, I'll use this one, standard corporate schedule, but let me open this in a new tab. And parallelly, I'll show you each and everything how to configure as well. We'll use them here, the existing one, but I will also show you how to configure them from scratch. Okay, so let me first pick this up. Account set. Account set is nothing but a set of your ledger accounts. Cash, balance sheet account, profit and loss accounts. Okay, subsidiary accounts. All of your ledger accounts. Set of your ledger accounts is called account set in work day. So we we'll use corporate here. And don't worry, I'll just show you one by one how to configure this from scratch. Okay, now account control rule set, important thing. So account control rule set is nothing, but where we have rules for your manual journals. Now there are two kinds of journals. Let me talk about it uh, for a minute. In Workday, you have two kinds of journals. Okay, one is your operational journal. Another one is your accounting journal. What is the difference between your operation journal and an accounting journal? Operational journal gets created from your operational transactions. What are your operational transactions? Your operational transactions are your customer invoices, your supply invoices, your cash payment, your interest payment, okay, your uh, asset payment, PO related stuff, supply invoices, ad hoc payment, and so on. There is a big list. We'll talk about that in uh, two, three chapters from now. But those are operational transactions which you create for your operations. Now, supply invoices, obviously, I have purchased something to run my business. Maybe it's goods or services, or maybe I purchased some raw material and to make it in a final product. So, all those kind of your know, operational transactions. Accounting journals are nothing but manual journals which you post to fix some month end entries or month end balances or to post adjustment entries. Okay. Operational journal gets created automatically. We'll talk about that how it gets created, but it gets created automatically once you create an operational transaction like a customer invoice, invoice adjustment, supply invoice, supply invoice adjustment and so on. So is it clear what is an operational journal and accounting journal? Yes. Shri, is it clear to you? Not sure if she is there or not, but uh, if you, you can hear us, just let us know. You can say hi, yes or no in the chat and we'll come to know about it. For now, I'll select a value. Okay. This control rule set is used for your manual journals. Account posting rule set is used for your operational journals. So let me select the value first. We'll use this one. Because somebody has changed the name of it, I'll just rename it later on. Okay. Account posting rule set. Now you see, the moment I have a sun accounting here, that currency field is not enabled anymore. Mm -hmm. Let me show you again. Okay, the moment you select an account control rule set here. Yeah, this is used for your manual accounting journals, which you create okay. manually. I'll show you each and everything in detail, don't worry. Right now, I'm just selecting existing value because it's good. It just saves a lot of time. But I will show you how to create it from scratch and how, how they look. First of all, we'll check the existing one. Then I'll show you how to create one. It's very easy. It's mentioned in the PDF also, so no need to worry. Okay. Then the moment you select an account control set, you can see this currency field has been graded out. You cannot change it. Account control set, use this one. This one, which were she was asking yesterday, if my company is INR and it reports it to US dollar, this is how it does. Suppose this company has a head office in Europe and they have to report all the numbers into 
zero currencies. Now you would put that zero here. Okay. And using this, you can translate the balances of this company into a euro also. But this is not the end of it. Like you can do, you can change this translation currency any point of time in your dirty reports also. When you run any report, financial report, we'll see that after like chapter five or six, that when we run the financial reports, we can translate the balances into any currency we want. Although we have mentioned euro here, but when we run the reports, financial reports, at that point of time, we can change the currency to any currency in which you want to see the balances. It's just like FYI configuration perspective, it's fine. But when you want to see the balances in different currency apart from US dollars, you can do that. It's quite possible. Okay. Now, this is like a little advanced thing. I will not talk about this right now. Once we clear three or four chapters, we'll talk about it. Now the currency is INR. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I want to report the balances, I can report the balance into INR. That's for okay. Indian government, Indian continent, right? Yeah. But if my parent company want to run the report, like at the same time, some CFO is sitting there in the US and he yeah. wants to see the balance in US dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. He can run a report like fine journals or hmm. trial balance. And then he will give this currency called USD. Even I don't put yeah. anything here. Okay. Uh. He can put that USD over there and he can see the balances in US dollars. Okay. Now, the other important part is this journal reversal option. Suppose for any reason you cancel the transaction, operational transaction. Okay. In that case, what will happen? There are two options here. Either you can say reverse debit or credit. Let me give an example in the Excel sheet. First of all, mostly companies use this first option only. Let me hit OK and then we'll talk about this if we we'll lose the change. So right now it's done, but let's come back with an Excel sheet example. Close this. Ah, so first option was reverse debit and credit. Let's assume I created a customer invoice. Customer invoice in which ledger account ledger account one five one five was debited. Mm -hmm. And this ledger account called 2581. These are ledger accounts, not the amounts. Remember here. Yes, yes, understood. Okay. So when I created the customer invoice, this ledger account was debited. This ledger account was credited. Now, with the first option, what I'm saying is reverse the debit and credit. So when I will cancel my transaction or when I will reverse my transaction, this will become 2581 and this will become 1515 and it will knock off the balances. Clear? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying with you, my first option. Now if you go with the second option there, keep debit, credit and reverse design. Means, simply means, so right now this was under credit. Means, Mm -hmm. 2581, right? In the original transaction. Now, what the system I'm saying is let it be debit only, but change the sign of it. Make it this and make it this. That's all. Again, it has knocked off the balance, but in this format. Mm -hmm. 